Okay, so inside of our Finder window, you'll see all the files that we placed inside um, through the WordPress installation process. And now we're going to get into kind of what all these files are really quickly, um, and then get into where we're going to focus most of our template work. Um, so all these files are just kind of WordPress's back-end stuff. Um, most of it you won't want to touch, uh, with the exception of the WP config for transferring it to a live server. Um, so now if we just go to uh, WP content, and click into there, you'll see this is our plugins where they'll be uh, placed and inside of our themes folders where we're going to create our theme. Now, whenever you install a new version of WordPress or a fresh install of it, you are going to get built in these 2015, 2014, 2013. Every year, I guess, they make a new one, um, and they kind of update the you know best practices for code-wise for WordPress every year. But for our purposes, since we're creating a custom theme from a Bootstrap template, um, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder, and we'll just call it the bootstrap to WP and now we have our new theme created more or less um, what we'll need to do is go ahead and click into it um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and pull open a text editor because we're gonna start building out or creating the files at least inside of this folder that we'll need to create our WordPress theme. Okay, so now we're going to start building out our file system. Now, for our purposes, we're not going to get too much into the PH uh, WordPress hierarchy, um, as that's a little bit outside of the scope of this project. Um, and it being a single page, we won't get into a lot of the other types of files. This uh, template also doesn't have a blog, so we won't get into any of the blogging uh, files that will, would be necessary to set up a WordPress site. Really, we're setting up a single page site that um, has admin functionality for content management system ser you know, purposes. Um, so in our case, the first file you want to create is, go ahead and click this. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and save this as index.php and then we're going to navigate to w through navigate uh, through WP content uh, back to our themes folder and then the new theme we created the bootstrap to WordPress. So go ahead and save that and it should add it right there. So now we have that file in place. Um, the next file that we're going to need to create um, and this is true of all WordPress themes, is a functions.php. So I'll go ahead and so create that. Uh, and then the next file that we're going to need is a header.php. The next file is going to be the oops, the footer.php. And the last one, uh, and this one's a pretty important one, um, as your theme will not even show up in the admin section unless you have this named exactly correct and it's saved in the root folder you can't put it in a separate folder it has to be in the themes root folder um, so it has to be in this same folder as the header and functions and all that um, and that file is just your style file so we're gonna go ahead and save this page oops I need to create a new file, a new file and then go ahead and save this as style.css. So if you were to make it like styles, or you were to make it, um, you know, main CSS or something like that, your theme would not work. So this is a very important file and it needs to be named accordingly. So go ahead and save that. Um, 
And then from there, we're ready to get into downloading. So we'll go back to here and downloading the files necessary from the bootstrap template. So um, go ahead and download it by uh, clicking here. I already have it downloaded. Um, so we're just going to take a look right now at the file system here. And in this, we're going to go ahead and open up the index file as this is going to kind of, well, it's our, our main and only page. And then it's also going to be how we sort of figure out what we need to do next here, what files are necessary. Um, so now you see at the very top, um, it's an HTML5 document. Uh, this is just some meta information that you can fill out. A title tag, go ahead and remove the title tag. You don't need that. Um, WordPress has a different way of adding that and we'll get into that later. Uh, now you see the Bootstrap core CSS files, the custom CSS files, which we're going to have to copy and paste into style because freelancer.css in that root folder of CSS is not going to work for us. So pretty simple uh, for the CSS. Uh, go to the bottom of the page now. And these are all of our JavaScript files. And so this is a good starting place. And so now what we're going to do is just figure out where each of these sections need to be inside of our um, header, footer, and in, in, in our index.php files. Um, so for this one, the header should be basically whatever you'd want. Um, say this was a multi-page site, whatever you would want on all of your pages. So basically your nav bar right here is probably where you're going to cut it off. So um, this is especially easy when you get a you know HTML5 template, but you know this this is a course that could technically be uh, for anybody transferring just a basic website um, of HTML and CSS into a WordPress theme. So it may not always be this easy, but that's a good rule of thumb is to look for where the nav typically ends. And so from there, we're going to go ahead and copy all these files and go into our header and paste all of them in. So now we have our header file with all of the information that we need. Go back to our index and we'll go all the way to the bottom again. Now, if we take a look at our actual example from their site and go all the way to the bottom, just to remember kind of what that's supposed to look like. So this is probably information you want on every single page. Uh, so we're gonna look for where that location begins um, and it'll probably be in like a footer section. So we're just gonna go up here. We see this is the copyright information or rather actually, no, it's not. Um, hold on a second. Um, so this one was a little bit tricky for me to find exactly what should be in the footer. So I'm just going to inspect the element uh, and then pull up the inspector page here. I always keep mine in a separate page. And this will let us kind of figure out where each element is on the page. I'm just going to make this on the bottom for this purposes. Uh, it's just a little easier to see. So we're going to go ahead and inspect the location. So it's inside of a footer element. And then we can see all of the JavaScript here. Then we go back and the footer stuff doesn't exist. <laughs> Okay, so this is what's happening here. Um, is there's these these uh, portfolio modals here that uh, only show up on small screens. That's what it says in the comment there. So now what we're gonna have to do is kind of piece this apart a little bit, and that's okay. Um, but it's a good thing to kind of learn because uh, different themes or templates rather are gonna have it kind of differently done, and and take this information uh, down in the footer area and paste that into our footer. And we're also going to go down 
and grab. We're gonna have to figure out a little solution for this, and I have an idea, so don't worry about that. We'll get to that a little bit later, though. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and grab all of this information, uh, including the closing tags here. And we'll just leave a couple spaces and then paste that right there. All right, so now the footer is begun. Uh, it's not quite completed. Um, so now we're gonna go back up to where our footer began right here and grab this whole section area as well as right before the nav. So right here, uh, we're gonna go ahead and copy all that and put all that information into our index. So the last thing file-wise that we need to go ahead and grab is this freelancer stuff, freelancer.css. We'll go ahead and open it. And then we're just gonna go ahead and control all, or control A rather, control C, copy it, and paste it all right into the CSS. So now everything's set up uh, from the template. Uh, the only things I would say we need to do from here is to start figuring out, well, okay, what files inside of here do we need to make everything work? And so you're basically going to want to take all of the files from here that we believe we'd need and transfer them over into a you know similar file structure you want to pretty much stay exactly the same if it doesn't have anything related to like style did um, a naming convention so for this we're just gonna go ahead and create a new folder and we'll call it CSS and inside of CSS just double click that we'll go ahead and throw in this bootstrap.min um, it's probably good to copy, but um, since that theme's free, we're not going to worry about it. Um, and then we'll want to, for Font Awesome, I'll show you a quick little thing. Uh, it's good for SEO. Uh, we're just going to use a CDN, Content Delivery Network. Um, so don't worry about anything related to Font Awesome, because there's a lot of files, and there's no need to uh, put them all into your site. Um, so that's more fun, awesome stuff. Um, and then we're going to need to just go ahead and copy the images folder and paste that. And that's going to have all the images related to the site so that we'll get an exact copy. For your purposes, that might not really work because you're going to want to change the images to custom things for you. But for this tutorial, we're just going to stick with that. Inside of JavaScript, we've got quite a few files. Um, we'll go ahead and just copy the JavaScript, but we're not going to need the bootstrap stuff in here either. Uh, we'll use the content delivery network for that as well. So just go ahead and copy this. The less stuff we're just going to ignore, basically what less is, is it's a uh, neater way to a more advanced way of writing your CSS. Uh, but it's definitely out of scope for this project, so we're not going to get into that at all. The mail, we're also going to probably ignore the mail because that's. it, it appears that this uh, template has functioning mail code in here, uh, contactme.php, uh, but we're going to use a plugin for all that. So this is the file structure uh, all in place. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start putting in the functions that are related to WordPress that kind of make this theme work. Um, so go ahead and save out all our files. Um, and don't save the index files or anything related to the downloaded theme. Those were just going to help us populate some of these files with the code necessary. And then what we're going to start doing is changing things so that the admin area can start populating information on our website. Uh, but that's going to be the next video. We'll begin that process of just kind of beginning throwing in some of these hooks and we'll get into kind of the strategies to take to kind of do this the best way possible.